Just last week, torrential rains in New Orleans, a triple-digit heat wave in the Northwest, and tidal flooding in Miami Beach. Previews of the future. Recently, the city of Richmond, California, became the ninth U.S. city to file a lawsuit against oil companies for their role that they played in destroying the planet. Fossil fuels like coal should be phased out by the end of the century. So how do we get serious about fighting climate change and working for a more sustainable and environmentally friendly future? And that's where we are today, present at the creation of a new age, the new age of hydrogen. The only way to sustainable energy is to find clean new sources of energy and store them efficiently. And hydrogen energy will be a big part of this because it's 100% clean and water is the only byproduct. To create hydrogen, we'll need to start from renewable energy sources such as sun or wind and use that to split water into hydrogen and oxygen through the process of electrolysis. I'm a member of the Thermal and Electrochemical Energy Lab. We're performing applied and fundamental research to enable the wide use of hydrogen energy in the future. The world is in a precarious position right now because 87% of carbon dioxide from human sources coming from coal, natural gas, and other fossil fuels. And if we continue down this path, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will rise from about 250 parts per million to greater than 500 parts per million. UC Merced is charting the effort in green engineering and renewable energy. It's actually the only campus in the United States that have all the buildings certified by U.S. Green Building Council. Power plant has been the greatest greenhouse gas emission contributor for the past 40 years. But in last year, in 2017, is the first time that transportation actually took over. This is because more than 95% of the vehicles are still powered by gasoline. And what we are doing here at UC Merced in our lab is trying to power all vehicles with clean hydrogen in the future. Sustainable energy is really a universal concern. Maybe a first world country like the US or a developing country like the Philippines where I came from. Energy is a necessity. Unfortunately for us in the Philippines, not everyone has access to fuel and power. So we rely mostly on the importation of oil as well as coal. Moreover, the archipelagic nature of our country makes it difficult to transport the fuel and the electricity into the far-flung areas. In this regard, fuel cells, I think, is a promising solution. I plan to take back the fuel cell engineering principles that I've learned to the University of the Philippines. And for me, all the change starts from our laboratory. So fuel cell engines converse from hydrogen directly into electricity. And this technology is not new. It has been developed by automotive companies like General Motors, Toyota, for more than two decades. So now, finally, we can see some prototypes of fuel cell cars running on the street, like Toyota Mirai or Honda Clarity. But to take fuel cell cars to the next step, to go from hundreds of cars to millions of cars, there are several challenges that we have to overcome. There are technical issues, like for example, where does the hydrogen come from? How do we reduce the cost of hydrogen fuel cell engines? And then there are business issues, the competition with the hybrid and battery vehicles. Finally, there are social engineering part, like public acceptance and policy issues. Here at Thermal and Electrochemical Energy Lab, we're working on all of the technical issues to make the fuel cell cars possible in the future. My key focus in the laboratory is the fundamental study of catalysts because that's where the fuel cell reactions happen. The work we do here at Thiel is to synthesize and evaluate novel non-precious catalysts that can either efficiently convert water into hydrogen for fuel generation or combine hydrogen and oxygen to generate electricity. These electrochemical processes occur in each cell which is just enough to light a bulb or a cell phone. But to power a car, we need hundreds of these cells stacked together. 
At this time, very expensive platinum is being used as catalyst for fuel cell engines. And our research will enable significant cost reductions for the large fuel cell stacks and hydrogen generator. My background is in mechanical engineering, so my interest is in how gas and liquid flows and how heat transport works inside of the fuel cell. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been interested in car engines. Now I'm working on the next generation of engines for the future. So I design how to effectively deliver hydrogen and oxygen to the catalyst so the reaction can occur more easily. One of the biggest challenges here at Teal is removing heat and water from the fuel cell engine because those are the byproducts of the chemical reaction. If the heat cannot be removed, the membrane will melt. If the water cannot be taken away, it is like a fire being quenched and the reaction will shut down. Before becoming a university professor, I spent more than six years working for General Motors to develop fuel cell cars. This hands-on experience helped me to know how to scale up pure research to real applications. So in our lab, we don't just develop novel catalyst material and test them in a beaker. We also spend a lot of effort to integrate these nanoparticles with polymers to make a fuel cell. The fuel cell is almost identical to the ones used in the car, so we can test them directly in the lab. There's a lot of applied developmental work, like mixing the catalyst ink and testing the rheology of the ink to see how it deforms under sheer force. Further, we develop computational models to simulate fuel cell performance, so we can compare those with the experimental data of the actual cell that we built in the lab. Fuel cell technology can be used in many other applications. Refrigerators, air conditioners, and washing machines can be powered by hydrogen in the future. Right here in the Teal Lab, we're even working on integrating fuel cells with drones, so that way flight times can be as long as two hours per trip. Overall, our goal is to use natural resources like sun and wind to create a clean and sustainable hydrogen community that can power our home, our cars, and many other energy needs.